All right, so my name is Tommy or Thomas Romeo, and my partner is Alex Marriage, and the name of our presentation is You Are Being Watched. Are you okay with this being recorded, by the way? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So before COVID-19, wait, hold on this. Before COVID-19, many safe precautions were put in after the events of 9-11. Precautions such as video cameras and security check-ins were mandatory for many businesses. It took time for people, for people to adjust and accept the fact that they are being watched and recorded because it has never been done before on this type of scale. These practices are still used in most businesses today and have adjusted to accept that they are being recorded at all times. All right, so um, the arrival of COVID-19 definitely took surveillance um, to a high, higher level with employers just want to track their people's, their employees' movements um, because they want to make sure they don't have to shut down the whole business again. So it's definitely- How tracking their movements help them? Um, to basically see like who they come in contact with. So like you'll see further on, like there's like phone apps and things that can detect like how close a proximity you come into uh, with another person. Okay. So you can tell kind of who's exposed, who's been exposed. Okay. Um, so yeah, this definitely marks a new chapter in debate over privacy um, because of things like that with the phone apps and tracking and um, trade-offs that people are willing to make for safety. Um, so in February 2020 in the U.S., many businesses obviously closed down because of it. That was, well, that's when COVID hit. Um, so... And there's no way to tell you unless you uh, get it tested unless or you have the symptoms of the illness, but a bunch of people actually didn't have symptoms of the illness and still contracted it and passed it on. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the restrictions were put in place so that large gatherings weren't happening anymore and forcing all but essential businesses to close down for foreseeable future. How will businesses open back up? Now that the number of cases of coronavirus are starting to deteriorate, businesses have to prepare to open back up. But with the risk of the virus still possible, there will have precautions set in place. Businesses are researching different options in which they can ensure the safety of their employees and customers. These new precautions will likely be in place until the vaccine is made, but you can see these around for forever. Let's take a, a, a second on, on that. We've heard that things seem to be slowing down. We look at the graph, and yesterday it looked uh, fairly flat. We can bring it up. Why don't you stop sharing for a second? We just sure. go over this way. Megan, glad you joined us. Okay. I just had a question for you guys in the meantime. Um, sure. when, you right said that, uh, when you said that uh, they had increased uh, sec uh, security uh, and uh, less privacy for workers, was that already written in contractually, like they're allowed to be monitored? Or do you think that's a new uh, wave of... Um, uh, waivers or something that you're going to have to sign to get a contract job in the future? Um, I'm not sure, honestly. I mean, everyone's kind of being tracked to like cameras and things, but the new things that they're kind of implementing are like the phone apps and like thermal cameras, which will be a little bit different than what people have been used to before. So, but it seems like from what I read that it, that people will, or they think that people will just end up getting used to it. So it wouldn't be a thing of like signing. It would just be a thing of like when people started getting recorded after like nine 11 from video cameras and stores and everything. Um, after a while, they kind of got used to being recorded. It didn't really affect them. Okay. Yeah, but at that point they were just doing it where you are. They were taking pictures. They weren't right. tracking me. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, you'll see further. They're not really tracking you outside, or that's what they say. They're not really tracking you outside of, like, the office for businesses that are using, like, phone apps. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure it's still being tracked. But Okay. Well, let's keep uh, – here's the latest. This was as of yesterday morning. I didn't update it this morning yet. But as of yesterday, um, we've got 2 million-plus cases, and it looks like there's a decline, but it still looks pretty high. And if we were to break this down, anybody want to guess? Oh, so this is a loaded question for some. Where do you think the declines are? What's causing that to go down? Where are they? I guess. If I remember correctly, most of the decline is within the core of the United States. The uh, coasts are still predominantly the largest producers of COVID patients right now, but uh, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are driving this. Uh, Arizona, Texas, and Florida are going the other way. Yeah, I was I was going to say I, I have a couple friends that work in hospitals, and they've actually seen a decrease rate of new entrance into the hospitals. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're start, they're starting a heavier wave in other countries, uh, in other states uh, like Midwest, because the testing process is even slower there than it was in New York. But okay. in New York, it was slower than most other countries in the world, which is kind okay. of crazy to think about. So now when we look at this, how, now how exactly would be monitoring movement help us with this? Uh, Cause it kind of sees like who everyone comes in contact with. So say if someone comes down with COVID, like you could kind of track and see who actually comes in contact with them. And if they come in contact, that person will be allowed to get, because, you know, it's like, it's very hard to get a test for COVID nowadays. So you need like an actual reason. So since, since this person actually came in contact with them, this person can now get tested immediately without having to like, get like all the health checks and make sure they have all the symptoms and stuff like that. Okay. So it would allow us to faster, to, yeah. to, 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 go ahead. To narrow it down, basically, like narrow down who, so like so like when COVID first started, like a person had it in like a big office building and they didn't know who like came in contact with them. Okay. And now this will be able to like narrow it down to. To be able to quarantine the people they were. Yeah. Be able to quarantine the people that like came in contact with them basically instead of shutting down like a whole floor of a building because you don't know who came in contact. Okay. So it reduces that. It helps you better respond faster to where something may have occurred. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can go back to your presentation. Good. Um, so next one. This one yeah. Next one. All right. So some of the different testing methods that we came across were thermal cameras, um, different types of health checks, mobile apps, which track some people. Um, different surveys that companies are doing and the soft opening that one company was proposing. Okay. How would you deal? Let's take a health check and, and go around on, on that. Help, uh, so let's assume everybody needs to work. Does anybody not need to work in this group? Anybody just afford just to hang out? <laughs> okay, good. Now you need to work and um, every morning you come in. Did you uh, interact with anybody that had COVID-19? Do you have the sniffles? Blah, 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 blah. How many of you would actually acknowledge when you came to work that any of those things were present? Anybody? Yeah, that's definitely one of the issues with, with it that I see. Megan, would you tell the truth? I feel like... Uh, so my mom is a nurse, and she's okay. very uh, susceptible to, like, this virus uh, because she has uh, some autoimmune. So, like, right when we have anything, like, she asks us, like, every day, like, health check-ins. She's like, do you have a headache? Do you have this? Do you have any of this? Do you have your taste? Because that's a new thing. So I feel like I would be very responsible and be like, I'm having these signs. I should probably, like, just make it known, okay. you know, and go home. Okay. Uh, because it's more of a risk if, you know, you infect everyone and then if you mm -hmm. actually had it, I would feel much worse if I infected everyone than just going home and really being honest. Okay. You're being honest. Uh, you understand the risk. What uh, if you have uh, 
you've used all your SNAP benefits for the month because this is the 12th and you have three kids at home, your wife is or her husband isn't working, and you need to buy food at the end of the week and you need that paycheck, what would you do? So I guess given those circumstances, uh, I don't really know. Uh, that's that's like the toughest part about this virus, right? Uh, if you really need the money, um, it's either risk spreading the virus if you think you have it or providing for your family. And that's like the biggest split between your own health, others' health, and your family's health. So Absolutely. I don't know, really. Okay, good point. I was going to say, I feel like the uh, having an open dialogue is very hard for a lot of people in general without uh, a problem such as this. But then when you go into something that could be hazardous to others, I feel even if they're not willing to be open, because a lot of some people like my, the biggest thing with this uh, COVID is that a lot of people don't know that they have it. So I feel taking a precautionary measures as much as possible is the best way first. And then um, if you know, I, I think there should be some kind of plan in place to uh, get reimbursed for time that you're out working because you have the virus. Mm -hmm. I know that they were talking about something like that at some uh, jobs. Um, my mom works for Chase and she's remote, but when they come back to the office, they they have a lot of precautionary things that they're talking about, um, about how not having people come into the office and just staying at home and working or uh, having some extra uh, off days if you get, uh, if you contract the virus. Yeah. Why do you think people don't believe the virus is real? I mean, we've all looked at, the, I assume everybody here, we've all looked at numbers, we've all read stuff, we've all seen stuff. Why do you think some people don't believe it's real and still think it's a hoax? Um, I think, sorry, is that a question for, for Thomas or? Either one, anybody, open question. I personally think that uh, it's because they don't know anybody who's directly affected, um, like or who's directly like had it, and or they don't know like a family member or friend who actually passed away from COVID. So that, I think that's why. Once they see this happening, then there'll be a, probably a different reaction. Okay. Uh, I think there's also some lack of trust in what were traditionally. Um, institutions that people went to for information and due to some of that erosion people uh, don't want to trust uh, what they're hearing from these. Um, an example I know of um, Iran for instance which was really hit hard there were a lot of people on the ground that didn't trust the government uh, that there was such a lack of trust in the government over there for their um, normal tyranny that they thought this was all a hoax to try to keep protesters away from be, um, marching in the streets against uh, cor corruption and tyranny scandals that were going on over there. And they really suffered mm -hmm. uh, because they thought it was a hoax over there. Do you think the same thing is happening here in the U.S. for the same reason? N not to the same extent, but I the opposite way is that, I don't know, actually, we won't go there. Uh, I, I was gonna. I, I was gonna say it's kind of like a loaded thing uh, yeah. answer, but I, I think a lot of people in America don't trust the government, um, mm -hmm. and especially there's been some things in the past that the government definitely has lied about that has come out is true that the government has lied to us, and yeah. there's some things that we're not gonna talk about, but uh, they they could be have lied to as well, like nine eleven or other things. I mean, sure. but. Uh, that's just like a big example of something sure. that there's a lot of people trying to uh, have theories and prove things that um, that may not have been true, but uh, very controversial. But yes. uh, in, in general, if the government wanted to lie to us, um, it'd be very easy through all the media outlets um, and uh, a lot of states that aren't affected and don't ha know a lot of people. It's very easy to think this is just something that's made up because nobody in my town has it not that many people in my state has it. Why, why do I have it? Okay. Or why could I get it possibly? Good point. And to build upon that, what Mark said, um, like there's a lot of like misinformation out there. We live in a very polarizing time. So information doesn't seem to be as objective as it used to be. It seems to be more subjective um, and emotionally charged um, to get people to pay attention to a certain sector of the news. So that's a, uh, 
definitely what I think is um, a factor in the misinformation, people not even believing in the virus. Okay. Andrew and Tommy, see how all of a sudden we could get a little bit off yeah. what you wanted to talk about? But do you see how it's connected? Yeah, it's all, yeah, I see it. Okay. Just you, the Thermal Alex. cameras. What's that? No, nothing. So uh, one option on the table is having thermal cameras in midtown Manhattan that can measure body temperatures of employees as they all enter their office building. Fever is a thermal imaging device that is modeled after the pre-check systems at airports. X Labs is developing the Fever app uh, that their employees will be able to use every morning that takes their temperatures with a digital therm thermometer. This app will send the information to their employer, and if you pass the health requirements, you'll be able to attend work that day. This can also be used to, to reduce lines of lobbies and buildings, as many public places will be taking your temperature before entering. All right, so this is a little bit more on the fever. So it's a quick and effective artificial intelligence-based system for screening and detecting um, individuals with a fever, obviously. You can kind of see in the pictures below there, that's kind of what it looks like and what the device looks like. Um, so yeah, it's a rapid thermal screening system um, to detect individuals in a crowd. And it enables the user to identify the individual with a fever quickly and uh, effectively. And the device right now sells for around $3,250. So it's definitely not cheap, but I'm sure businesses will be willing to afford it for its use. Do you think we could see this in Geneseo? I think it's possible. I think for like a large area, this could definitely help. Like, I think it can be very effective. Well, how would they just think about that? So if we use, I, I, it makes sense. I, I think it makes sense to me. So let's just say we put them on the door at Wells Hall when you walk in yeah. from the quad. How yeah. would, what would you ha how would you like to have somebody that sitting there? Yeah, and when they like, see your the problem is how I don't I'm not positive how they would identify you. I think that's what goes along with the app. Okay, Maybe it identifies your face and, um, but I know the it definitely is something to do with the app. Okay, but yeah, I think it could definitely be effective in large areas. So that you could then see, we'd have a sense of who was. Uh, who had a fever and that would hopefully re stop the spread or reduce the spread. Yeah, right, correct. Another option is health checks. S some companies are requiring health checks before the person is allowed to come back into the work. Businesses are taking temperatures in their employees before they're allowed to enter the building. And if their temperatures are too high, they are now sent home. Pepsi Cola bottling plants in New York are giving workers surgical masks and checking their temperatures at the door. And in China, temperature checkpoints and employee health screenings have become commonplace at most business locations. All right, so more about the mobile apps. So different companies are looking into using um, mobile apps to track locations of their employees. Um, so the apps can be used to pinpoint which employees may have been exposed to the virus uh, without needing to shut down an entire floor, like I said earlier. Um, of an office or manufacturing plant. So one company that's looking at doing this is Price Waterhouse Coopers. Um, so it said that they're preparing a launch for their mobile app soon that traces contacts by analyzing the workers' interactions in the office. Um, so the the app basically monitors and scores like how well they're keeping their social distancing and staying away from other people basically and I don't think that everyone could see their data I think it's just them um, and so their apps gonna use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, with other signals to determine the proximity of each other within the building and yeah that the app does not track the location outside of the building apparently you believe that hmm. probably not I would have to say like, I don't, I don't think there's a way to shut off the tracking right when they exit the building, but I mean, it could be possible. I'm not a tech genius, but 
depending upon how it's tracking them inside the building, there are ways that you can limit it to such as pinging off of local Wi-Fi routers yeah. rather than having the device broadcast its location. So there are ways that you can do it. But. Okay. Do you think that's sort of like, isn't that infringing on me? <laughs> the thing is, you're... I mean, monitoring me for temperature and health, but to monitor how close I come, I mean, is a buzzer going to go off? Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I get up, beep, 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 I'm four feet within Alex. <laughs> they actually already use this technology in a lot of businesses, like stores like Walmart, Target, um, big uh, department stores actually have systems in place to tell where people are on the building based upon pings off their cell phone. So they can get ideas like how long you look at a display to see how well their advertising is working, uh, what areas of the store you tend to congregate in, uh, therefore maybe opening up floor space or put more advertising in those sections. Everywhere you go, uh, you are giving a lot of details to these companies without even realizing it today with your phone. Uh, and this was before COVID. This was just for internal ad tracking that uh, you go into a store, you're probably being tracked without even realizing it, your active location within the business. What if the college did that? I mean, think of some of the things you guys might have done on campus. Would you want the college to know who you were with or what you were doing? Uh, what, what do you think? I think especially in a college situation, because it's not like at work, it's different because you're getting paid to be there and stuff like that. So they kind of like own you in, in a sense. Yeah. At college, it's kind of going over the boundaries there, I feel like, especially because it's such a large group of people. So it's, I, I think it'll be overstepping a lot. But don't you think the college should keep you safe and engage in things? To keep I think you there's safe? other other effective ways that they could do instead of tracking everyone's locations at every single moment. Okay. How old are you, Alex? What's that? How old are you? I'm 20. Okay. So all of a sudden, uh, the app picks you up at Kelly's and you're 20. What if the college shared that with the local police department or the state liquor authority? How See, you <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be too happy with them. Uh, uh, okay. And I think are it, like, able to if, do that? If, if they were too able to track your location, it, they should keep it between that person and the school. Like, they shouldn't be able to share information, kind of like information with, like, your doctor or something like that. They shouldn't be able to just share all your personal information out there. Paige? Um, well, I was just thinking, like, would the school even be able to do that? Because is Kelly's on campus? Uh, no. So. But that doesn't necessarily mean him? that the wireless wouldn't go that far or the tracking wouldn't go that far. But wouldn't they have restrictions to just the campus? Well, I don't know. If you're thinking of protect, protecting the health and safety of students, and we have students that frequent there, mm -hmm. wouldn't I be still trying to keep my students healthy and know whether the people, if Alex gets it. Um, well, then, wouldn't that be like if the office was to track you outside of work? Yeah. So what if I just turned off my phone? I mean, you could do that. I feel like our generation wouldn't. I feel like we'd actually be able to find a way to get around that, but I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it also depends a little bit on how closely people are going to be monitoring this, because is someone really going to be looking to see if there's 20 year olds like at a bar or are they just looking to see if you come in contact with someone too? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. It also depends how much they're looking. Okay. Well, well the thing is, basically, the dialogues that uh, I think Boy is trying to open up is like AI technology can tell. He's just saying if Alex got COVID, then it would track all the locations Alex has been. And then yeah. let's say, like, he went to Kelly's and then he was underage, and then it would be boom. Uh, yeah. Should they share that information with the police? When, when does it stop? Yeah, I think that's the question, Mark. Yeah. When do we use it for an effective purpose? And when does it become invasive or used for nefarious purposes? Yeah, it's the same thing as airport security. It's like, it, uh, they've shown that it's so much less effective than they try to have it. 
um, initially, but that's because they started checking too many things uh, frivolously and took away from the real nitty gritty what they actually need to look for uh, for threats of uh, bombs and uh, mm -hmm. so on. They Good started point. checking everyone. Any other thoughts on that topic? I mean, if anyone wants to see this in action, just look at the articles about South Korea and Taiwan. Both of those countries' governments implemented this exact technology, and it was kind of scary how quickly they were able to ID a sick individual and then everyone that person had come into contact with. It worked. They've got some of the lowest infection rates in the world right now, but it is scary reading some of those articles about this technology in action. Mm -hmm. Okay. You didn't expect that, Alex, did you? What's that? You didn't expect that response from your slide, did you? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, different company tactics. Ford at one plant making po uh, protective gear for medical workers is experimenting with workers wearing wristbands that alert them if they come in within six feet of another. Like an electric shock? I want to know about an electric shock, but I think it just starts like beeping or something okay. like that. It's just like kind of like an alarm. And okay. then Volkswagen AG has rolled out a list of 100 workplace changes it plans for building cars. Uh, workers will no longer pass materials to each, to each other hand by hand, setting them down instead. Employees will line up single file to enter factory gates, keeping a six foot distance. All right, so is this the right dark ones? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a different order, honestly. Hold on, I might be sharing an earlier version of our PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> this one? Yeah, this is it. Basically the same thing. I think we said more slides. Um, how do I get it to come up on here? Here, Tommy, I got to pull it up right here. I can do it. All right, yeah, you do it then. I don't know why I did that. I mean, while you're putting that up, the, the we've seen such volatility in the market. Uh, yesterday, over the past week, originally Southwest Airlines, some of you may be working on that, um, depending on which group you're in. Um, it, dro it dropped, went up 30 40%. Yesterday, it was down 20 30%, and today, it's up 10%. Go figure what's going on. There we go. Got it. Yeah. Is it up there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there are, surveys is also another option on the table. Uh, so like basically they're going to have like a daily questionnaire every morning, make sure that their employees are safe to come into work. The answers put on the questionnaire can determine who will be going to work that day. Those who that are not feeling great will be forced to stay home while employees who are, who who are not in past the daily questionnaire are given a code to be able to access the office that that day. So like essentially they'll just get like a, like a code they will punch in at the front door every day and people who failed it will not be able to give in that code. So, so they won't be able to access it even if they tried. And then Okta Inc is debating on requiring employees that want to work in one of their 12 global offices to have to register a day in advance where they will have to go through a health and safety check. This will consist of questions about their temperature and other potential symptoms they may. All right, so this is the soft opening I was talking about earlier. So um, a company called Interpublic has been going through different options to on um, how they want to send back their employees. And they thought of using three different levels and ranking them by how risky it is. So a level one would be um, an employee that has tested positive uh, for the COVID-19 antibodies. So they're considered the lowest risk of contracting the virus. Um, level two is for those who do not contain antibodies but are un and are under the age of 65 
with no chronic health issues. Um, so they're at low to moderate risk. And level three is any employees over 65 or someone who is pregnant, uh, smokes, or has chronic health issues um, because they're definitely at the highest risk of um, getting the virus and for it to be potentially like fatal. What makes the magical cutoff at 65? I'm not sure, honestly, but it seems that everywhere I've seen it, it's been 65 that... Um, 65 and over. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, though, why that is. Okay. I think it has some more to do with chronic health issues. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like I've seen everywhere, like on the news and things, though, they have always been mentioning like 65 and older. It's because uh, older people are more susceptible to get higher risks of it. I know, but 65 is such like a set age. I think it has something to do with your body's ability to reproduce cells at like a certain rate because as you get older your bodies aren't your body isn't able to produce cells as quickly so like interesting that's why like people older people have like wrinkles because their body can't produce the collagen cells to keep their skin tight i'll have to work on that <laughs> but 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 now come back am i being discriminated against i'm not 65 yet but wouldn't i be discriminated against if you were 65 yeah um, yeah, basically. You're discriminating, you're discriminating against me because I'm, I'm 65 or older. Huh. That's not right. Because I feel like someone at the age of 60 might be the same, have the same risks as someone that is 65. Oh, are you guys? Yeah, true. There's, there's no data that says you can't get it. I think it's, I think it's honestly like, I would be kind of happy if I was being like protected. I don't know. It makes me okay. feel like they actually care about me. Okay. I, I, I like that view, Megan. That, that's good. That, that's good. I, I, I can buy that. Yeah. I was, was going to say, if, it feels like the same thing as if uh, we're, we're monitoring where you go and who you interact with for your safety. It's the same kind of idea, in my, in my opinion. It's like we're doing this for your own benefit. It just depends if people think that they feel like they're doing it for their own benefit or not. Okay, so in that case, it, then let's assume I am 65, and um, do I have the right to know who you've come into contact with when you come to see me for my protection, Megan? So if you come in to see me, should I be able to check to see who you've been with? I don't know. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I feel like I would be fine with that. I would be pretty, pretty strict at my house for the most point part so we're in a very small town but it's still you know obviously a huge issue but i would probably be fine with that for your own safety see because you you, you really have an understanding of what this is what the impacts are i guess i mean i've uh, most of my family has gotten in long island and we've lost so it's like i don't want anyone else to like feel that so it's more that side okay good So RX Age Real Estate Company says that they're going to be acting as a guinea pig to test out new symptoms on their employees. Uh, they're testing out a mobile app in which the workers' movements are tracked. Employees get a higher score the more time in the office they're further than six feet away from another person. Employees would see his or own score, and the employee would see aggregated data on how employees are complying with social distancing as a whole. Okay, so they're just putting a positive spin on it. Yeah, exactly. So I could make more I'm money if I to do well. I could make more money if I stay away from people then, or follow the guidelines. I don't know if it would directly be like more money, but they could like add in like other incentives as well that would give these okay. employees like, like a reason to do it. Okay. Versus like not. How many? Uh, do you? Uh, are you any of you guys competitive that you want to beat each other out? You be number one, have the highest score. Stay furthest away as possible. If number one like gets a better incentive, I would probably be more likely to do it. Okay. Than like let's say like number two. Okay. Would you want to be number six? Uh, really, do you want to be number six? I mean, I feel like a lot of this is going to come down to 
how companies are going to implement these types of policies and how they're going to roll them out. Because I think that that is going to affect employee cooperation as well as publicity. And especially with how volatile the market is right now, if you do this well, I think it could help your business. Because like, I think that these are going to be, these policies are going to be publicized to a certain extent. But if you fail to do these well, I think it could hurt your business. Uh, absolutely. Good points. I think we already talked about this. Yeah, we do with that. Yeah, I messed up. I don't know how it happened. Um, so the commute. Um, so public transportation, obviously, um, is definitely a concern for work opening back up. Um, so office locations, like in the city, um, that have heavy like train usage and subway, um, may take longer to open back up because people uh, will have trouble like getting back to work. So company cars are being considered as an option for people who rely on public transportation to get to work. And uh, the big companies are also considering to use rental cars or private transportation to make it affordable for their employees. Um, again, RX, our Realty um, are thinking of opening smaller satellite locations so it's easier for their employees to hmm. get to work without using public transportation. Um, but interesting. many companies will continue to have um, employees work at home just so um, I think the public transportation is safer. Okay. Acquiring the COVID-19 tests. Big companies like Amazon are attempting to get coronavirus tests to be able to test all of their employees before returning to work. They want to be able to do so to have daily tests for their employees, but this comes with an obvious problem of not having access to this large amount of tests. Doing so will boost employee confidence of coming into work every day and can help them stay more focused. The plan is to have testing sites that are located in convenient locations for working areas where you can see results in minutes. However, there are risks that come with the testing sites. A typical COVID test requires a swab in the back of the throat, which brings the risk of a patient coughing onto the doctor, either giving the tests or can infect the room for the next patient to potentially get uh, mm. the virus. So it's obviously drawbacks with every option, and this one's could this one could be more serious than the other ones, I believe. And for my personal experience, uh, over the past few weeks, I've been working for a shipping company, ULE Group, where you've uh, where I've been fulfilling Amazon orders of pretty much sending out face masks masks across the country for people that need them and every day enter, entering work the boss or whatever uh she she takes her temperature coming into work and every single day they're giving us new face masks and they're even getting us multiple face masks a day but i believe that they're not really doing a good enough job because every single day you're working with different people from all over long island pretty much in this like huge warehouse so like so Essentially, if one person in there gets it, they could essentially spread it to a bunch of other people as they're working with. And I believe that they should have like strict groups of people in your shifts that you should work with them. And only those people for your remainder of like the whole time you're there at work. Good idea. So, I yeah. like that. Yeah, so I, I personally don't think they're doing a very good job with it. Maybe we should do that on campus. It's like having them take certain classes with certain people. As a group, yeah, a cohort. Yeah. yeah, it's actually not a bad idea. Huh, okay, good thought. And I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Good. What did you learn from doing this? Uh, I learned a lot of like new methods that people are thinking about, but I learned that a lot of them are going to be seen as ineffective or either crossing someone's personal life that they wouldn't want to be crossed. Uh, I've definitely I think the most interesting thing about this was definitely the thermal cameras and the uh, mobile phone apps with the tracking yeah because um, I just want to see how they're going to be implemented for like the future and how long this will last with the tracking and obviously with technology still advancing I feel like it will be more uh, prevalent in the in the future too because I think it will, things will be cheaper and they'll be more effective 
systems for mobile apps and different types of camera systems sure. for tracking people. Can you stop sharing for just a moment? <laughs>